on the ground, in the air, at sea. In Ukraine, drones are reshaping warfare. What Hollywood could only dream of not long ago is now reality. Do you know the movies that we've seen about the Terminator and other, you know, robotic systems? You know, so many people are wondering about the new technology and what's coming next. But really, it's what's happening right now. From the first days of the Russian large-scale invasion, you saw the Ukrainians uh, start to use drones. You now have a situation where both the Ukrainians and Russians are building around uh, one to two million drones a year each. So-called dragon drones that drop molten thermite to burn enemy positions and soldiers. Aerial drones that attack unmanned systems on the ground. Drones that hunt down troops on the move and terrorize soldiers out in the open. Almost nothing can stop them. So we can see the ordnance uh, being dropped. Dr. Alexandra Malloy at the University of New South Wales has written extensively about how quickly drones are changing modern warfare. Innovations in Ukraine happens from one week to three months. In the first year of the war, large drones like these were hailed as wonder weapons for Ukraine. Not anymore. As the war uh, unfolded, they disappeared because they simply became uh, a large and easily detect target and no longer use. And we are very lucky today to have with us uh, Australian Major General Mick Ryan. Retired Australian Army General Mick Ryan says what's happening in Ukraine is a cycle. Not long after an advance in drone technology, there's a countermeasure. Starting with low-tech cages, armor, even old tires plastered onto vehicles in a sometimes futile effort to stop drones from getting through. You've seen then a transition to these cages that uh, when they first come out from the Russians, people laughed at. These are now universal on just about everything that moves in Ukraine, from uh, cargo trucks to high Mars to tanks. Everything uses them now. So this is a, a heavy uh, manufacturing site. Australian defence companies are part of the drone innovation cycle. This is Defendtex in Melbourne. From ground systems to small aerial drones that drop bombs. A laser-guided uh, rocket-propelled grenade. They're all developed here, and all with an eye to what's happening in Ukraine. A lot of those lessons are being observed by the Western militaries and trying to ask the question, what does that mean for us? Uh, just because it works in Ukraine doesn't necessarily it would work in an Australian or an American or a British context. Doesn't mean it won't either. Lessons from Ukraine are helping shape new systems, such as this unmanned ground vehicle, Banshee. It's being put through its paces by the ADF. It can lay mines or detect them. It can even carry and launch its own small drones. And its top speed is 110 kilometers per hour. One key consideration influenced by the war in Ukraine, making Banshee affordable enough so militaries can buy lots of them. The target price is about $20,000 each. You could build a system like this that costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. Building a system that costs you know, one or two tens of thousands is the challenge, yeah. so that you can afford to buy them and deploy them in large scale. At demonstrations like this, the Defence Force is keen to show how it's integrating unmanned autonomous systems into war fighting. But retired General Mick Ryan believes the ADF needs to go much faster. And we're moving very slowly on this, unfortunately. We're taking a very risk-averse approach. To be quite frank, sometimes we can be a little arrogant about what we think we know when we don't know everything we should about new technologies. Vice Chief of the Defence Force Robert Shipman respectfully disagrees. 
We are watching very closely at the way in which Ukraine and Russia are using drones and counter drone technology, but not just Russia, in all conflict zones. We're interested in seeing how this technology is evolving. The ADF has been criticized by some for over-reliance on sophisticated, expensive unmanned aerial vehicles, such as Ghost Bat. Relatively few in number and able to strike at very long range, they represent the polar opposite of the reality in Ukraine, where small, inexpensive drones dominate the battlefield. Air Marshal Robert Chipman says the land-based trench warfare of Ukraine is not the kind of war the ADF expects to fight in the future. In Australia, the conflict that we envisage, that we need to be prepared for, that's outlined in the National Defence Strategy, requires us to operate over very long distances, and, and therefore it will require systems that have long range, long endurance, and higher payloads. They are not the types of systems that we're seeing in the Ukraine fight at the moment. Regardless of what drone strategy militaries adopt, the war in Ukraine has made one thing abundantly clear. From now on, no country can fight and win without them.